Oh yes, it's that time to do some very serious spider control. Let's take a look at my spider control chart. Most of my viewers would be very familiar with this spider control chart by now. Notice how I haven't rewritten it. It's based on the Southern Hemisphere's seasons. We must be educational, boys and girls. This is Silly Tube. The spider season for me, really, the spring equinox is, oh, let's call that the start. And it gets worse and worse as we go on. By Halloween time, you'll see lots of spider activity. Where I'm at at the moment is I've missed that burn there in February because we've had such a hot summer and we're now into March and I've got to come in and do a burn because I've got some serious spider problems. Let's just say if I miss this totally and we ignore the spiders today, well, we've got egg sacs, we've got spider nests and it will just create a spider apocalypse that will just keep continuing on and be a nightmare for the next spider season. Today isn't about capturing spiders as pets, it's about controlling a very dangerous and deadly spider called the Redback Spider. Warning. The warning on this video has been removed and this video is highly educational. It's not about using chemical today, it's about preventing spiders as well. I've got my small uh, weed dragon here, I've also got a big one. I've got a GoPro camera, I've got my tweezers and I might even play with my tuning forks as well. But I've actually got to go inside for a sec to uh, get something that I really need for this job. <laughs> What's this loser on about now? Spiders? Who knows nothing about spiders? Nothing! If you want to know something, this guy is dangerous. He's Australia's most dangerous. It's written below me. Look. Anyway, I'm going to make his job a little bit harder. I'm going to get those stupid tuning forks. He's always trying to tell you he can get spiders of tuning forks. He knows nothing. I've got some of his rubber chickens. I've got that stupid red pointer. And now I'm going to get that tuning fork. <laughs> The tuning fork's just in the table there. Let me reach over and grab it. <laughs> Crikey, these things are hard to pick up. I'm going to try and take one of these spiders as well. <laughs> You'll never know what's going on. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Uh, that's what I've grabbed. I'll need some water because it's thirsty work. I've got a bowl here so we can see more clearly the spiders that I, well, get along the way. And I'm just thinking, where's my tuning forks? They were right here. And I thought I had three spiders here. Man, what is going on here? Anyway, let's do it. Okay, this is problem area number one, and I've had a bit of a study of this area uh, via a nighttime camera, a security system called Arlo. It's actually an Arlo 2 camera. And I got to witness the redback spider making its wondrous web. It was actually quite miraculous to see, but I also witnessed when I watched that video that is quite a mature redback spider. There's egg sacs there, there's also a male. It's a nightmare. So the female is underneath there, reclused away. She's also got some XX going on. There is a male redback spider there. He's not very bright and he doesn't live for very long and he's going to get eaten by her. And uh, below that area there, I noticed down on the ground there, my like, crikey Charlies, what's going on there? It's looking like ants feeding on, uh, I call them devil bug. Uh, you might call it a mole cricket. I think that's what it is. Man, there is not much left of that. The ants have... Uh, Wow, uh, totally taking that apart. So when I come in and take out the redback spider, there is going to be collateral damage. Uh, I'll take my Arlo camera away so that's not destroyed. First thing I'll do is I'm going to wet this area down really, really well because it's about to get very, very hot. If I scorch any mummy's flowers, I'll never hear the end of it. Okay, got the GoPro set up there. It's going to be a very brief and intense heat event that is going to drop the spider very, very fast. I'm sorry to say it, but it's a good night, sister. And that should have got the spider. It's an absolutely take no prisoners approach here. It has done an excellent job. It's very, very fast. I can see two XX here. There's one there. And there's one over there that both of them have opened up. They're very early in their development stage. And the redback spider is here. Okay, I'll just grab it and I'll put it in my little bowl here. Number one. What I'll do with the egg sacs is I'll just leave it here. The ants will come and clean up on that. I've got to give something back to the ants because I've just taken a bit away from them, haven't I? And as for trying to find the male redback, it'd be way too small to find it. They've been totally incinerated. Is that something that hunts out redback spiders? Mmm, it's um, 
dark blue metallic wings. It's got a, a yellowish type head on it. See if I can get closer. Oh, crikey, Charlie's um, very unusual looking little critter. Hopefully it's friendly. And I'm hoping it's something that takes out spiders because that's what I need. That strange critter is flying all around here. I hope you got a good look at that. It's on the pot there again. That's about as close as I can get to it at the moment. There you go. Hopefully someone can ID that strange flying critter for me. Well, that's the red back nest uh, that we've just taken out. Just along from that one is another problem area. It's one of these black pots which often present uh, problematic because the redbacks like to get up in the handle area here. There's messy web all through here. Because I cut the grass the other day, I can see things hanging in the web. And that's how I noticed the uh, other web and I, I pulled all the web down and I got video of the web being reconstructed. Amazing, but sort of unamazing as well. Okay, time to hit this area here with a bit of heat. Just to assist me on this one, I'll just twist this pot around a little bit like that. There we go, that's better. I'm just noticing that strange bug. It's now on the, the grass clippings, okay? It's hanging around me all the time. I hope it's friendly. I've just put a bit of tile there so I can see uh, whatever drops down from this zone. It might be very tricky to see this spider, it might only be a tiny one. Okay, keep a very keen eye on what's going on. Here we go. That might have been enough to nab it. Yes, I see it. It's down on the tile. I see it on the tile. It's a, of course it's a female redback, it's growing, put it this way, I've seen bigger than this, uh, but that method is extremely quick at nabbing these spiders. That's two down, I wonder how many more I'm going to find. While I'm here I'll just uh, get some white lithium grease very quickly here, and that's a great way of stopping spiders. As I was spraying the grease I noticed there is another spider nest, there might be a different type of spider on that handle, let's see what comes out. I can already see that spider there, it doesn't look too friendly if you ask me. Anyway, this will clean up the problem. Dusted. Oh, another red back fell, I think. I think I got another one. I could have sworn that wouldn't have been a red back area there, but down on the ground here, and this is no joke, uh, we've got a red back right here. Just been crispy critted, and I'll put it in the bowl. That is number three. Count them up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. One, two, three. It just tells you that uh, birds of a feather often flock together, don't they? Just finishing that little rough job off. So yes, already in the front yard, uh, we've picked up three females. One was a breeder, it basically had egg sacs as well. I'm just getting a small burner here around these small pots, just in case there is some small redback spiderlings that are set up around here. Sorry, mummy, I'm burning your plants at the same time. I should have put a bit more water on, shouldn't I? Oops, I'm in trouble. And I'm also coming in underneath here, getting the flames right around these pots because this will be problematic as well. They are smaller pots. Uh, I don't think they present as much danger as in having spiders on them. But what I like about little burner is I can get into recluse areas that you can't normally get into. And it saves me turning pots around because I'm lazy. Yes, I'm a lazy person, but Crikey Charlie's, um, I love dealing with spiders in this way, I tell you. And I'll just cool it all down uh, once I'm done. I'm not that maniac. I hope I'm not. And there's a pot here that I sprayed with the white lithium grease from last year because I had a redback spider and I'm hoping that it's still uh, spider free and it certainly looks pretty clean to me. Okay, there's a chalk and cheese shot. That is a baby weed dragon which does a baby baby job and right next to it is a proper weed dragon which does a proper proper weed dragon -y sort of job. Let's give the proper weed dragon a bit of a burn. Just to demonstrate to you a weed dragon actually on a weed, well that there's paspalum. We don't like paspalum and you can do this to it. Okay, nice hot flame and I tell you what, that's gonna die, 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 die. It's a little bit non-selective but it does a good job. Okay, in amongst the front garden sculpture, I can see a red back spider nest. There's the web that you typically see red back spiders, it's heated up. Good old wee dragon takes no prisoners. Good night, little sister, and if I'm lucky, I'll find the carcass. Four redback spiders from the front yard. At this point, I'm up against a change in the weather. It started to get a little bit too windy. I had a bit of a peek at what was going on in the backyard, and I'm going to grab one more spider before it's too late. I don't fully understand why I'm finding a mature, multi-year female redback spider, but at least the egg sac hasn't hatched yet. It's really important to tidy these spiders up before that egg sac hatches. 
I'm just going to wet this area down uh, extensively. Uh, the wind is coming in. I feel like I should just blap some fire up between all of these and just get it over and done with. Um, I'm a bit surprised to see that very large and very mature female. Um, hopefully no egg sacs have hatched yet and I think that's what I've got to try and always do is get in here before the egg sacs have a chance to open up and that's the whole theory of the process. In reality, mummy's got to get rid of these tubs. Uh, the first tub's presenting of trouble. That one's clean. I just had a very quick look. That one's actually fairly clean. That one's fairly clean, but that's the one that Big Bertha is hiding out in. Uh, that's a dangerous one. I'm just going to split this tub to the side a bit. I have got some gloves on because I've got no idea what's living underneath here. And uh, I think she's going to start to become a little bit aware that something tragic is about to happen. That is a very large female red back with a very, very large egg sac. I can tell you that is a monster. Well, sadly, uh, this is a good night, sister. Dusted. I'll tell you what, this is about as big as you get the red back spider. This is a classic example of a fully grown one. What a absolute stunner, and that would be getting ready to lay another egg sac as well. Quite amazing, hey? And there's the egg sac there, and I'll try and get that too. With my tweezers, there's eggs spilling out of it. Luckily, I got to it uh, before it opened up with the spiderlings. Crikey, Charlie's. Um, what a catch, I tell you, what a catch. I think the part that surprises me, but then again it doesn't surprise me, is that, crikey, this area can change so rapidly. It looked fairly clean. In fact, it was very clean last time I looked, but man, this time around, that was a nasty catch. Real nasty. I am going to blap these with fire. I'll just split them a little bit first, and it's a real reminder to me, man, if I miss these little times of checking these areas, well, the spider apocalypse just kicks off again, doesn't it? Hey. I'll come along and do each bait. That's all it needs, it doesn't take very much. That's enough heat in there to take out whatever is going on in there. I think it's the best and most effective way to deal with these spiders. And to deal with the back of the tubs, I get the little flame, the little um, wee dragon on the, the lazy flame in a sense. And I just go along there and it cleans up whatever's going on at the back. And of course you can go between the tubs with this one here, but what I like about my big burner is that it takes out the spider really fast. What I've found is this lazier flame is a little bit cooler. I know that won't make any sense and, uh, well, it doesn't snaffle the spider as fast. Okay, that's dusted and I'll come along and quieten it down with some water. I just hope mummy doesn't realise I've done this and she'll freak out. Oh my garden's going to be fried again. Well, I'd rather have a little bit of fried garden than a whole stack of uh, red backs running over the joint. I've been arguing for ages to get rid of these tubs and I know many people in the audience are saying, well, why do you persist with them? But for some reason, mummy really likes doing a garden in the tubs. And uh, what's happened is a lot of them got smashed up in the hailstorm. You can see the plastic down there still. So that was, uh, see, it's all broken now. Uh, my argument was get rid of all this stuff. It's all smashed up. It's nothing but a spider breeder, but oh, there you go. Uh, Mummy persists with her dream of uh, gardening in the tubs. Mummy doesn't listen to me. Maybe she'll listen to you. Do you want to leave a comment and tell Mummy to get rid of these wretched tubs and put a proper garden bed in here? I mean, it's not as if we don't know about that. We've got it like that right next to these. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's a wasp there. I think it's a mud door, but because I've made the area wet, oh, it's gone into the spider zone. It knows I've cleaned out the spiders. Look at that. Uh, it's going to collect some mud to do its uh, special thing. Uh, the wonders of the backyard, hey? Never cease to amaze me. I like mud daubers. They're a pleasant wasp. They don't go for you, and they look very attractive sometimes, and they're very interesting to watch how they operate. Oh, nothing like a good day of spider control. I'll tell you what, that red back there is a cranking one. That is a large, large female red back spider. Let's go and put it in the bowl with the rest of the spideys. In a funny way, I've sort of done well the front yard and well, point five of the backyard. I dare say these tubs here, the mummy loves to put things in tubs. Have you noticed that? Uh, there could be more spider problems there. Is it really worth coming back and seeing more? I know one thing you want to really see. Look at that there. 
Mummy's giant melon. That thing is enormous. I think Mummy's going to get the seed out of that and um, it's not an edible thing, if that makes any sense. It's like a big garden empire here and we're at the time of the year when the pumpkins are starting to come out along the grass, just like that. This part of the backyard is often an area where the redbacks like to get into because of the tubs and things and the certain ornaments. Uh, Mrs. Cow is there laying on her side having a, a lovely rest because she's broken a leg. And the toys there actually aren't looking too bad so uh, maybe there's no need to see any more. And like I might have said I'm up against the change in the weather and a front coming in and uh, that cloud there uh, isn't looking too crash hot. In fact, I can see like a scary face there. Can you see that? And going up the top is like its hairdo getting blown back. I'll let you look at that cloud again. Can you see the two eyes, the nose, the mouth, and then the hair flying up the top? There's my bowl of redback spiders from the front, and when I add the one that I gathered from the back, you'll just see how monstrous it is versus the, those other ones. That is a monster redback. I'll tell you what, I'm glad I got to doing this today. If I let this go a couple more weeks, I would have been in a stack of spiderific problems, and I really should have done this a couple of weeks back, and that would have nailed these spiders before the egg sacs got laid up. But I'm glad of what I've got there, and I hope that you've learned something in this video. If you haven't learned something, I'm in a stack of trouble. The wonders of the Australian redback spider. Sadly, it is nothing but a dangerous, deadly pest. They seem to have adapted to urban environments, and they breed up in massive numbers. When we come along and do part two, I thought I found a big spider in part one. I find a bigger redback spider in part two. Luckily, I get to it before it is laid up in egg sac. I also find there is a magical divide in my backyard where there is one style of spider living on one side of my backyard, and yet the redbacks are living on the other side. For some reason, this magical new spider can drive out the redbacks. And if you've been watching some of my previous videos where I'm finding these spiders all around the back of my house, maybe you'll know the spider I'm talking about. And don't worry, I'll also do a bit of a featurette on the wonderful Bindi the Redback Spider, who is my pet Redback Spider. It's all going to happen in part two. And let's just hope it's educational enough and scientific enough so the YouTube bot doesn't demonetize it. As I so often say these days, my partner has become my enemy. It certainly makes the Redbacks seem like the good guys.